All right, guys, before we jump into this video, remember to uh, check out Cardo. There's an Easter sale going on right now, so link in the description. I believe it's 25% off only for Easter Sunday, 72-hour flash sale. Grab yourself a Pack Talk Edge. Get yourself a duo with a buddy and uh, split the cost. All right, first ride with the MT-10. Ooh, idiot. Found an escape. Good job. So this first video, what we're going to be doing is breaking it up a little bit. And uh, let's take a look at this. So we see headlights. We see a windshield. In our lane, we have to do something because part of planning our ride is finding a good position for safety, locating this hazardous situation. We, this is a relevant threat, and then we have to navigate this active one because it is an active threat. It's in our lane. So what do we do? We put ourselves in a new position for safety. And so how do we do that? We find an escape path. Okay, we have to find that escape path. And thankfully, we're already in the middle of a swerve, and we're going for this escape path, the one that's presenting ourselves. Now, we're hoping they're going to get it back into their lane, but we don't know that. So we're going to go for what we currently see. And so we're going to target fixate, right? Because it is a tool. We're going to target fixate on the open spot where we can go. So good job navigating this active threat. Handled it. Now we are going 129. So what else can we do? Slow it down. Slow it down. Going a little too fast, buddy. I know it's your brand new MT MT10. Oh, bike life in Venice. Oh, geez. Ooh, we. I gotta pause it real quick, so the music's probably copyrighted. So we're gonna go ahead and increase ours. Okay, so we're having a little bit of fun here, having a little fun. But then we crash the bike. So what can we do here? We're gonna have to rescue our buddy. So first, we gotta remain calm. Okay, so if if it looks bad enough. Or even it just looks bad. Go ahead and call 911 or tell someone. Like, point at them, look at them, call 911. Because if you don't, nobody's going to do it. And you can always cancel. Once you get on scene, you can do a refusal here. So it's always good to get that chain of survival going to start, okay? Because who knows? You might need to have surgery. And you want to get them quick. Ensure your own safety. Make sure you're looking for hazards. We're on the road. Big hazard is what? Cars. Okay, other cars. That's going to be bad. And then wear PPE so you don't want any bloodborne pathogens, anything like that. That's very important. Stop any major bleeds. So direct pressure, apply a tourniquet, or pack the wound. Now, I highly recommend you guys taking a stop the bleed class, but if you do get yourself a rescue pack that's in the store right now, if you get yourself a rescue pack, you get the card, okay? There's a card. And then you also get, I'm going to try to be quick here, you also get the rescue booklet. It is a fun little instructional manual that is in the style of a comic. So a lot of fun. Anyways, I don't want to take too much time on that. So make sure you do that. Quickly assess the severity. It's the back side of the card. Any head injury symptoms, you don't want them to get back on the bike because then if they're like a little woozy, you don't want them back on the bike, okay? Because there could be some other issues there. Spinal cord injuries, if they start feeling like tingling in their extremities, so arms and legs, eh, some nerves, some nerve damage maybe. Uh, shock symptoms happen a little bit later, but that's usually with a loss of blood or a neurogenic shock where they have a brain stem or brain issue and so that's not regulating their circulatory system very well, which will cause a drop in pressure. And you get that from head and neck injuries and e even back injuries. So be very careful with that. But mainly the thing you can do is stop any external bleeding, lay them down on their back, okay? Lay them supine, prone for you guys that play Call of Duty is on the stomach, supine is on the back. Monitor any changes if it gets worse or better, and then keep them warm uh, inside our trauma kits. Our uh, emergency blankets, mylar blankets, whatever you want to call it, space blankets, and those are really helpful, okay? That will keep them warm, okay? Let's go ahead and take a look. Let's go ahead and do that. So we dropped the bike. We might have a right leg injury, maybe? Oh, we, both leg injuries. And then face. Full face helmets, everybody. Full face helmets. Okay, still music. We're not going to play that. Um, oh, he has just one of those military-looking helmets um, where it's just a half helmet. Not good. Wear a full face if you're going to be playing around like that. You want to protect your airway. You want to make sure you stay, you have your teeth. That's important. We okay, we were swerving in and out. Looks like an Indian scout. Those are great swerves. But we're kind of... When I say practice your swerves at speed, because you can practice in a parking lot, but you really can only go 15, 20 miles an hour before you start running out of parking lot. And so what I recommend is when you're out riding, let's say 40, 45, um, even at highway speeds, if there's like a, a discoloration in the road up ahead and you see it way ahead or like a pothole way ahead, kind of go for it, but then like swerve and then get back. 
But that's what I, I'm recommending. I'm not recommending swerving in and out of lanes and going crazy, but practice at speed too. Um, so this is a little much, and you might actually get a, a ticket for like reckless driving. Oh, pay attention. Ah, not good. Wasn't paying attention. Oh, then we caused an accident right here. Oh, geez. Let's take a look at this. So he looks back because he's getting pissed. Maybe he's having a bad day. He wants to have some fun on his bike. He looks back and he's like, you know, F you, buddy. Woo. But wasn't looking ahead because we're in the middle of a turn. If you're, if you're going straight in a turn, you're going to go out. So wasn't paying attention. Looked up. So we're white staged, right? We weren't paying attention. A little bit zoned out because we we're looking somewhere else. Our attention was somewhere else. As soon as we looked up, we immediately went into brown stage. Okay, we panicked. We did something. But we panicked, so we slammed the brakes. There's that. Rear tire slid out, so what do you think? Slam the rear brake? Probably. And then uh, dumped it. And then we caused an accident here, so this person wasn't paying attention. And by cause, I mean we kind of influenced. Not cause, we influenced it. Because that person should have been paying attention too. And now we're on the ground. So mechanism injury. Hopefully we didn't get hurt too bad. Oh, he almost ran. Did he get run over? Oh, jeez. So now we're laughing, or we were laughing, and then now we cause accidents. Good job, buddy. Oh, where are we? That's a sidewalk, buddy. That's a sidewalk. Where were we going there? Where were we going there? So we were on the road. This looks like Florida. Florida man. Uh, we hit the curb, so we launched up. We did not aim where we were supposed to be going, which is to stay on the road. There's the face into the ground, into the grass. Thankfully, there's a lot of grass and vegetation in Florida. It just naturally grows because all the humidity. So that's good. Wearing a full face, that's good. And it looks like he's attempting to get back up. So that's good. Um, after a crash, just go ahead and lay down for a little bit. Let your body stabilize because it just went into hyper mode. Uh, you don't know if your blood pressure will drop because if you stand up, you're like, oh, I'm good. And then you dump because your body's like, no, let's lay flat because I can't keep putting blood to your brain because the blood pressure dropped. The vessel's either, either dilated or you lost blood. Um, it's probably the vessel's dilating, though. Just be careful. Rainier, you're in the chat. Here we go. Good job. Good job. Finding the escape. So that was somebody kind of coming out at you. So we're coming up to here. We're in a good position. Middle, 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 right? And so if you were in the far left, right? Because we do the whole, you know, outside, inside, outside. Because we're trying to, you know, that's what we're taught or that's what we see in like MotoGP and like some of these, these track day schools. And that's, that's good and all. That's good and all. That's another tool. That's a different thing. But I like middle, middle, middle. This is my thing that I like to do. And that's because when it comes to planning our ride and positioning for safety, you don't know if somebody's coming out here because on a track, you don't have cross traffic or head, head, head on traffic. So we have left, center, and right. I like being in the center because this is my spot right here. This is what I'm taking up, right, as a motorcycle. All of this is my space cushion. All of this is my space cushion. So if anybody takes this part of my space cushion, I'm not going to get hit. And if I want to make sure I have a better space cushion, I'm just going to move over a little bit. And now I have a bigger space cushion. I don't like that arrow. Let's go ahead and make that a little bit better. There we go. I now have a better space cushion. And then I get back into center because we're always positioning for safety. So that's me. That's me. You do you. So you went over a little bit to the right, and you're right back into the center. Good job. Good job. Here we go. Dafra was completely helpless. The driver uh -oh. didn't see him at all, and the biker didn't have time for any reaction. Completely helpless, could not see him at all. I think there was an opportunity, but at that point, yeah, jump off the bike, let them hit it, deal with insurance, get some gloves with fingers on them. The dum dum wasn't paying attention. Who does that, right? I don't know. Ryan's moto low side. Oh. Oh, 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 he's checking his, his, his groin area. So you notice how he, he immediately decelerated once he hits the guardrail. Now, your body doesn't immediately decelerate. Maybe, like, your musculoskeletal system immediately decelerates, but your internal organs also, there's, like, a delay. And that's when you can have shearing of organs and shearing of blood vessels, and that's where internal bleeding comes in. 
So immediately stopped because of that. And it looks like his legs wrapped around it. No good. All right, our speedo is all blurred. Weird. Oh, there's the dump. Thankfully, it's not like the other guardrail because the other one is sharp, but you could still hit some parts and have that impact. That's not good. Get up, we got the cops coming. Oh. No, so he's running, that's good. He was able to move, that's good. So we're doing like a visual assessment there. Now if he didn't get up, that would've been bad. Let's go ahead and watch this one. We're gonna be pausing a lot on this video. Only a different perspective reveals- Got a, uh, hit a road surface hazard here? He hit the dirt directly on a curve, putting himself in a difficult situation. Okay, we, we hit some dirt maybe? We hit something. Thankfully he was able to keep up on the bike. Very good. That's a good sign. All right, let's move on. Group ride, having some fun. Wear some gear. Is he wearing like blue nitrile gloves? Interesting. We have some people, oh, he's gonna do a little wheelie. And then we went up a little bit more. And now we gotta, Tico's gotta rescue them. Come on, Tico. How do we rescue? Yeah, we're good, we're good. Yeah, we're So he's up and moving. Yeah, you have to turn it off, turn it back on. side of the dog whoa was that like a german shepherd corgi mix okay i said we're gonna pause that's a german shepherd corgi mix look at those little legs maybe a basset hound mix that's probably a corgi that eh, looks like a corgi mix a german shepherd corgi mix i don't think he hit it did he Yeah, he hit the dog. Poor guy. Pull over! On the Kentish roads. He's usually in the chat. Let's see what happens here. Oh, open lane pattern. Good job. So when we talk about... When we talk about open lane patterns, it's like, what can you do? Because we have to find those escapes, right? We have to find an escape uh, path. Now, we can swerve decelerate or accelerate. Now we could do a swerve and accelerate, a swerve and decelerate. We can do that. Our bikes are, they can do that. You, you just don't put a ton of braking power with that because um, you need to have some traction for the swerve. Same thing with acceleration. But as motorcycles, especially with like a more powerful motorcycle, we can accelerate into an escape to get ourselves out of there. So that's, we usually see the deceleration part. We usually see the progressive braking. So this is really cool to see an acceleration. So he accelerated. Right there, instead of honking the horn. Now, now, now he's rev bombing, but like you usually see people rev bombing, that removes power. You want to have power when you're accelerating out. Yeah, now they're gonna get all mad, whatever. Boom, boom. Oh, everyone's getting all angry. Here we go. Freeway. That's the name of the guy. 116. Around objects on the road caught the fast moving rider of guard. Objects, huh? So we got some alligator skin. So it's probably coming from this. No, it's not coming from that vehicle. But maybe that vehicle hit. So we're moving off. So they slowed it down. The video slowed down. He's, the speedo never changed. So found the escape. So it's it's much harder to swerve and escape things when you're going this the speed so just be aware of that around objects on the road caught the fast moving right so there's a little bit of alligator skin of guards so we're finding some escapes now we're still going 117 so we found escape here now we're going to hit the little rumble strips that are on the side to alert sleepy drivers if they start going a little bit too wide and start going off the road it's supposed to wake them up a little bit hopefully so that's going to make some adjust that's going to make some weirdness to your tires but thankfully we're going to get to here and we're back on the main road, okay? Thankfully there was a, uh, an off-ramp that if we needed to, we could have taken. But never slowed down. Hey, found the escape. Ran a guy threatening and trying to fight a lady with kids and no one is doing anything. Well, it's up to you if you wanna do something. It really is up to you. I don't wanna, well, I don't wanna die. Got a little Harley, that's cool though. Let's see what he does, though. Did a nice U-turn. Practice U-turns, which you can do with the Smart Rider Drill booklet. Links in the description for that. Check it out. It's 
it's on sale still. Now it's up to you. Um, you are taking responsibility for your safety and possible second order consequences, which would be legal. Um, no, you want to be a smart? You want to tell me you want to go? Too much gummers, bro. No, get out of here then. It's not Stop harassing people, mate. Yeah. Hey, you weren't quite real. At this point, tell the woman to go with her kids so that she can kind of take over. And then when she has a space cushion, then you would leave. Dan pulls you turn in front of biker. Uh-oh. Swerve. Good job with the swerve. Lots of hand movement, but good job with the swerve. So with, received a gentle reminder with the business. It's important to be fully focused during a speeding. Fully focused. Whoa, whoa, yeah. Open lane pattern. You guys saw that. Take a look. You've got a big open lane right there. Possibility of just coming in, right? Whoa, whoa, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Here we go. This red vehicle is too far back from the stop sign. Couldn't see around oncoming traffic. Somebody's clear. Line of sight issues. Oh. This is why I have a rescue pack in my, my van also. Because if I'm driving, I want to be able to assist. So we have somebody that couldn't see, line of sight issue. The red truck is a line of sight issue. We have the right of way. They don't. They shouldn't have gone. It is what it is. Um, so when we're coming up to these intersections, we're in orange days prepped for these things. Typically, we can see vehicles before they see us because they have the A-frame, the B-frame of the car. They have, like, mirrors in the way. They're, they're just, like, searching everything. We have, like, nothing. So we have really good visibility. So if we see the side of the vehicle starting to creep out a little bit, do some progressive braking. And when we're going through an intersection, we are already planning our ride. So we're looking for these hazardous situations and then looking for our escape paths. It's very important to be doing that. Right here, there's the impact. So this is why we wear full gear just in case. And then hopefully enough people are rescue trained or stop the bleed trained at least and uh, can help out. 